Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Burns, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event or webinar, um, webcast, online show, uh, whatever you want to call us. Um, we're here live online every Wednesday morning at uh, 10 a.m. Central Time. However, if you're unable to join us on Wednesday mornings, that's fine. We do record the show every week, and the recordings are then posted onto our website. And the end of today's show, I'll show you where those are. Um, we put the recordings up there. If our presentation, presenters or speakers have any um, slides or handouts or documentation, we put that up as well. And if any websites are mentioned, I grab that, and um, we bookmark those in our delicious account, so that's available to you as well. So after the show, you'll be able to have access to all of that. Um, we do a mixture of things here on Encompass Live, um, book reviews, interviews, mini training sessions, uh, discussions, um, basically anything um, library related. We um, are happy to have it on the show. That's really our only criteria that it's something that um, has to do with libraries. Either libraries are doing it, it could be of use to libraries, of interest, whatever. Um, we're pretty open about that. Um, we do have guest speakers come in sometimes um, to join us here, both in person and remotely. We will bring in guest speakers from anywhere um, around the, uh, Nebraska and around the country. But we also have Nebraska Library Commission staff come in um, as well to do sessions. And that's what we have this morning with us. Um, to my left is uh, Deborah Dragos. Hi. Hi. <laughs> um, she is our Technology and Access Services um, Director here at the Nebraska Library Commission. And... Um, she has a presentation here. Um, I just want to talk about Google Books and all the, um, you know, there's lots of different resources people have that they use for different things, but this is one that you might be able to find some really um, interesting things and stuff you didn't know that was in there. I know I haven't right. explored it much myself. Sometimes when I'm doing searches, it pops up in the middle of results, mm -hmm. and I use things because I find something interesting, but I'm sure there's much more if you actually go used it used, purpose, yes. <laughs> the purposefully way is that it would be much more useful. So I'll just right. hand over to you to tell us all about the Google. Okay, thanks Krista. And I'll start out by um, warning all of you that I apologize. I wasn't quite expecting this when I first scheduled this session with Krista, but I have just recently had cataract surgery and I don't have my prescription glasses yet. <laughs> and this screen is just far enough away that I can read the word Google, but everything else <laughs> is sort of a blur. So if I mistype something, uh, please forgive me. I will have to have Krista sort of nudge me in the right direction, but we will soldier through. And as Krista said, um, Google Books is a resource that maybe not a lot of people have really taken time to look at yet, um, but because the courts did finally give a final decision oh, mm -hmm. on the lawsuits that were brought against Google about their whole Google Books project. Um, and they were the lawsuit was settled in Google's favor. I thought it was time that I started taking a look at this particular resource and then talk about why other librarians, other people might want to add it to their list of good resources. So today we'll talk a little bit about how the site works, what types of um, resources you can find in Google Books and why you might want to go to this site first as opposed to just Google, and who might really benefit from the things that are in this particular uh, database of materials. If any of you have used Google Books to a great extent or, you know, you, you're curious about something that maybe I don't talk about, please ask, please um, uh, contribute your experiences. If you found something that really helped out a patron or helped out yourself, please let us know that too. We'd like, to, like it to be a bit of a discussion here today. Mm -hmm. But I will start out by talking a little bit about the um, Google Books project itself. Um, and I'm going to go to the about and how this all got started. Let me see if I can click on the right thing. I'm looking for library project. Yep, that's right. Yep, right there. Yep, yep. right there. Got it. Okay. Sort of muscle memory here. <laughs> <laughs> and then I am going to click up here on library partners. We'll come back to that other page in just a minute. So when Google started working 
on this project, they partnered with a number of academic libraries and then they have spread to libraries around the world. So when you're considering, you know, thinking about what materials might be in this particular collection, you want to consider what types of materials these particular academic libraries or mm -hmm. other national libraries might have. So you are looking maybe towards some things that are more academic, but there are also government documents, local history information, um, just a lot of you know general information plus classic fiction and, and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. However, Google has added some more components to it too, which we'll look at here in just a minute. But I'm going to back up one page and mention that not everything in Google Books is available to the general public in full text, okay? There are four different options for each of the books that are in Google Books that are, that are um, basically, you might say, cataloged or indexed mm -hmm. in, in Google Books, okay? Um, <clears throat> some items are full text, which is wonderful. Some items you get just a limited view and that might be a, a few pages. Some show just snippets. So whatever your search topic was, it might show one sentence that has that particular, those particular phrases or words in them. And then no preview, okay? But you, as I'll mention here later too, there's generally information on how you can find a print version or other versions to get the full text too. Okay. The full text items are generally materials that are in the public domain. Basically, that means they were published before 1923. Okay. So with that in mind, we are going to go back to the main site here. Okay. From the initial page, which is books.googlebook.com, you get a basic search box. And I'm just going to go ahead and type in a search. And I'm going to go with prohibition. <laughs> Did I spell yeah. that right? Yeah. Okay. Um, imagine that you have a student, for example, who needs to do some uh, a research paper on prohibition. Okay. They could just type in prohibition and they get all of these different resources. You'll notice you've got different dates here. You've got some items that are in full text, some that have no preview at all, some are snippets, etc. So there's a lot of data here. Now, if it's not, if it's just a preview or um, a uh, a snippet for this particular project that the students doing research on and it's a current book, those are things that they could probably find within their local library or they could find similar information mm -hmm. on, a, on a website. Even Wikipedia will give you an overview of mm -hmm. yeah. you know, the, the opposing views and who the main, um, main uh, people were in the whole movement against having uh, alcohol available and uh, <clears throat> The, ad, the Volstead Act that finally brought about prohibition, all that general information could be found in a lot of other places. So what we want to look for maybe for this particular student are the primary sources that maybe his teacher is requiring. Mm -hmm. So there are a couple different ways that you can go about limiting to um, primary resources. And if you go to search tools, you'll notice that you have several options to do limiting. And this one, which is uh, for time, by default it's any time. They do let you pick a particular century or you can do a custom, okay? I wanna do a little bit more limiting than that because you also can uh, specify whether you want yeah, whether you want uh, 
any books or whether you want uh, to retrieve items that have free Google books that you can download or things like that. What I want to do is, and I've, okay, I need my little tool gear and I can't see it. Or is it? I'm trying to make it long. Yep, there, that's, there we go. That's, okay. Yeah. If you come know. over here, you can get to the advanced search screen, which gives you a lot more options, okay? You'll notice you have a number of different boxes that you can use to do Boolean type searching. You can limit it to um, uh, how much text you want. And I think I'm clicking on the one that says full text on mm -hmm. Yeah, full view. Okay, full view. Oh, thank you. Um, you can limit it by language, and I can't quite see, so. Editing for. We might just skip limiting my language. Um, and you can also search by a title, specific title, by author, publisher, ISBN, etc. What we're going to do to make ours a little bit more specific is we are going to go down to the subject field and type in prohibition. Okay? So I've limited by the amount of text. I've limited by saying I want it for a particular subject. I can also put in date, a date range, okay? You can specify um, a month if you'd like. You don't have to. I am going to pick the dates of 1873, which is when the, um, the Women's Temperance Union was first established. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to go to 1919 when the Volstead Act actually passed, okay? I can also choose to increase the number of results that show on the page and then click search. Okay, now I have a lot of uh, items that were specifically written during that time, okay? So they can be considered primary mm -hmm. sources and they will offer the viewpoint of the people from that time. So you can see, okay, what were the arguments on both sides? Um, and what what were they, what were um, not just the people out in the public saying, but what was said in, and I'm sorry, I can't quite read mm -hmm. the titles, but there are, there are uh, Senate hearings listed in here before the Woolstead Act was passed. Um, so there's a variety of different resources here. So I'm going to go back up to the top and I am going to... Okay, we're gonna do this. Um, we'll just go ahead and click on one of these and we have the people versus the liquor traffic. Wow. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah that helps, Krista. Okay. Um, what you can do I then know. is you can, because I searched by subject, it's not going to give you um, the links to where that word specifically shows up within this mm. particular uh, uh, book. Okay. Otherwise, there'd be little little bars along the side that show you, you know, generally where the those terms that's, that's show up. That's how I've kind of come across mm -hmm. Google Books things. Is I just do a general search, not specifying like you did here to subject in Google. And sometimes this will come up as a result, and then it pops you right into where that word is sometimes in the document. Right. Right. Yep. Okay. So, um, because this is not, uh, or because this is full text, you can, if I wanted to, I could go to the box over to the side, take out the search, the subject search that I had put in there, where it's gone now, okay, and I could type in the word prohibition, or I could type in any other word, actually. Prohibition. <laughs> and it will then show me each of the pages cool. where that particular word shows up. So then I could go into that particular page and read the full text there, okay? It also tells me on the left-hand navigation side that this book, ebook, is available for free, so I could go ahead and just download it. 
or if for some reason I wanted the book in print, I can find booksellers that have it available, or I can click on the Find a Library, and it actually goes to OCLC WorldCat, nice. and then will show um, which libraries actually own this and how close they are to you. And it, it does work by zip code. And for some reason, it's defaulting the Library Commission to a different zip code, zip but that's OK. Too, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Lincoln zip but, code. Yeah, so. If you scroll back up, I think it hit mm -hmm. on the right. Um, Whoops. OK. Yeah, nearby libraries oh, yep. up here, yeah. Okay. So, so the so closest was yeah, yeah. South Branch of so it's putting us in a little bit in southern Lincoln as opposed to downtown, but that's close okay. enough. <laughs> close enough. <laughs> okay, so we're going to go back, and I also wanted to mention if you click the, whoops, sorry, my mouse is being a little bugaboo here. If you click about this book, it gives you. Um, the publisher, the date, it gives you um, some uh, subjects, uh, the number of pages. So it gives you a little bit more information. It gives you a table of contents. It shows you if other editions are available. Mm -hmm. They like to show these common terms and phrases yeah. if you're interested in, you know, drunkard makers, <laughs> you know. <laughs> That's an interesting dram phrase, shop. Yeah. <laughs> some, of the, some of them are sort of interesting. But then what I also wanted to show you at the bottom is that if your um, if the person who needs this for research has software that allows uh, for import importing citations, mm -hmm. then you can use these uh, buttons to export the citation for that particular software. So it does have some neat features and it has a QR code for you too yeah. if you're interested in that. Now, you'll notice that there, it also says my library, my history. Um, if you want to use those things, or if you notice up here at the top too, it also says write review, mm -hmm. you do have to have a Google account and you have mm -hmm. to sign in to use those particular features, which I am not going to do right at this mm -hmm. very moment. Okay, so the next thing um, I was going to show you from here is you can just go ahead and type another search in this box and related to prohibition, you know, okay, what happened after prohibition? Oh, we had bootleggers. <laughs> so, whoops. Let's see if I can. And it likes to, oh, we'll go with bootlegging. It likes to give you suggestions. So, you know, it pops up. And <clears throat> you'll notice that if I go back to my search tools, <clears throat> and I'm, I have to admit, I'm still learning why it does something sometimes. Mm -hmm. If I had come back to this page and typed in bootlegging, it would have preserved the time frame that uh -huh. I had from the last search, but mm -hmm. because I was within a book when I typed in a new search, yeah. it didn't preserve those limiters. <sighs> so you, those are things yeah. that you have to keep in mind if they're really important to you. Okay, mm -hmm. so I could now go back in and, and do a custom time, or I could go back to the advanced search and you know do something from there. So. Um, You'll see again, you know, these are, um, there are a lot more current items. So I could, if I wanted, one of the other ways that I could limit is to say, I just want books and no magazines. Mm -hmm. Or I could say, I want uh, at least a preview available, mm -hmm. in which case I get preview and full text, okay? Um, so there's just a variety of things there. Okay. Another um, type of uh, search that you could do, and I'm going to go to, a, no, I'm going to do this one up here. I'm going to put um, quotation marks around this one. 
is this it for it's oh it's a little slow yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. forensic medicine okay this way it will look for the entire phrase instead of looking for the term those two words individually okay and you'll notice it brings back um, and, uh, a lot of in, uh, current information, which we will work on limiting here in just a minute. But I wanted you to notice also that now we have an ad at the top. Mm -hmm. So that's something that you have to be aware of. With Google Books, you will get ads sometimes. So. Yeah, and that's actually interesting that you're doing a search in books. You can see at the top in the mm -hmm. blue, it's it's limiting you to that part. Right. But this is an ad for a website, not something in right. Google Books. Yep. So you, yeah. Mm -hmm. Whenever you see that little yellow ad thing next to something at the top of Google results, anywhere in Google, it, pay attention to it. It yeah. might be something good. Sometimes it, it is exactly useful. what you're looking for. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's not at all, and you just have to ignore yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I limited this particular search to the 19th century just to show you. You know how popular uh, the CSI and all oh, those yeah. other uh, television shows are? Mm -hmm. You know, maybe somebody's yeah. interested yeah. in, well, what did they do, you know, in the 1800s for this particular thing? There are a lot of books. And as a matter of fact, this very first one that shows up is A Handbook of the Practice of Forensic Medicine. So we can click on this particular book. And you'll notice this time, because I typed it in as a phrase, it does show you page oh, by page blue, what all these okay. little blue all these little blue bars show you the different pages that that particular phrase shows up on. Okay. What I'd like to do though is just to page down here a bit to the table of contents to show you that they did go through and actually create links so that when you're in the table of contents, okay. you can jump to chapters or however many parts there are within the book. So you'll notice, uh, okay, this title was from, shoot, 18, darn, I forget the exact year, and, I, and uh, we'd have to go to about this book to find it, but we'll get, we can look at that later. Okay, so you can skip down to anything, you know, within here and and find <laughs> uh, the text or you can forensic medicine you know is sort of a broad subject term so if you click on it anywhere and then go down you know you never you don't know exactly what you'll get okay but again I could go over here and say well I wonder what they how they defined rigor mortis or did they talk about rigor mortis back at that in those times imagine they did it's a Latin phrase so mm -hmm. <laughs> and they did so again they give you each of the pages that you could go into to find what how they talked about rigor mortis okay now if I wanted to know okay what do they say about rigor mortis today then what I could do is type in rigor mortis and look for at least something with a preview Oops. so I go back to my search tools and say that I want something with a preview available Okay, the very first one, Forensic Pathology for Police, Death Investigators, etc. We'll click on it and see what they have. And in this case, with the preview, we get several pages. And so we can read through the entire piece that they have on rigor mortis. And it'll take a minute to load. So you can use this in different ways. If you want something current, um, but you need just maybe a blurb about it, you don't need the full book, you can look for something that has a preview in it. Okay? Nobody has a question so far? Comments? Um, yeah. If you okay. have any questions, use your questions section of your GoToWebinar interface. Type in there. We'll be able to see that. Um, if you have a microphone and you want to voice your question, just say, I have a mic. Unmute me. 
uh -huh. and we can do that for you. And I am going to go back to the advanced search here, and we'll go back to our student. And you know, this could be also for genealogists, for writers who are de doing research, you know, want something accurate to put in their book, some uh, feature from something. Mm -hmm. Okay, this time I am going to put in, say this student is um, basically looking, looking for a topic, but they don't know quite what they want to talk about, but it has to uh, be written, uh, it has to use a primary resource, primary source. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say I want everything that has the word personal and then either the term narrative or journal or story or experience. Okay, so it can have any of those terms. Yeah, two wise and story. Thank you. <laughs> Take that out. Okay. It, everything will have personal, and then it'll have at least one of those other terms. And then I'm going to say I want full view, and then I'll say I want 100, and we'll say we'll go for English this time. And do a search. So now you can see all the different personal narratives that people have written. And because we're asking for full text, they're generally going to be in the 19th, from the 19th century or earlier. Okay. So you have um, explorations in Texas in 1854. You have uh, pilgrimages in the Middle East. You have the Siege of Lucknow. I'm trying to place that in 1858. <laughs> hmm. Some war somewhere. <laughs> um, a thrilling ex personal experience, Brooklyn's horror. Oh, my oh, goodness. God. What's that Sounds, one? <laughs> yeah, thrilling. <laughs> oh, and there's a massacre someplace. Oh, cost at the Brooklyn, New York Theater. Oh, must have been a oh, fire. Oh, fire, yep. Mm-hmm. So this could be one way that a student could narrow down their subject, mm -hmm. you know, or get some ideas for what they might want to do their research on. Okay. So there are, there are different ways to do searches. Mm -hmm. We do have one question that yes. looks like it's come up here. I'll pop it up so you can see it. Uh, I'm doing Undocket, but it's not doing it. Let's try this. Oh, I'm hitting the wrong button. Ah, hang on. I was using the wrong button on the mouse thing. There we go. Okay, what kind of materials is Google Books good for finding? Does it have any collection strengths? Any particular strengths? Um. It, I, hmm. it doesn't really have a collection development policy beyond what's, what's available, in the academic, what's, what's yeah, academic and, and, and in the foreign libraries. Yeah. And, you know, open um, to be included. I mean, right. Yeah. It, you'll find um, some libraries really collected, talking about out of the ordinary books, some libraries collected a lot of. Um, like court report summaries, mm -hmm. um, government documents from way back when, um, association papers, mm -hmm. um, military records, but sometimes, you know, military records might be local to the area of the university. Right. So right. it's not countrywide. Right. And I think looking at, at the beginning, Deborah, had sh you had showed that list of the um, universities that were library partners. 
that would be a way to find out what it might have something more so more in is, is seeing what those universities might be interested in. Or I didn't really right. read what myself, their, their description on that site say this is the kind of stuff we do or not. They, they <laughs> um, talk about their mission and um, a, a bit about what they contributed, but not yeah. everybody, can, you know. And I, I at one point, I, I guess I skipped too. Google started out with the um, universities, but for the a lot of them, um, for some of the more current items, they have opened this up to publishers and authors who want their materials oh, in want Google to Books. Just voluntarily can, right. can contribute it so, indiv individually. Right. Okay. So sometimes they're available in ebooks that you can purchase then through Google Books, or you can find them at a library or or a bookstore. At, you mm -hmm. know, if you want them in print. Right. Okay. Follow up. Is there any way that libraries can work to partner with Google Books? Like how do you get involved now? I guess it, there yeah. is a uh, from the main site. Let me go, let me just. Um, I'm going to do this. Okay. Oops. Okay. If you go down to the link that says publishers. On the main site, it does tell you how, how you can partner. Um, and this is particularly for publishers, but I would imagine that you could probably um, get information from here, how, to, how they work with partners. I don't actually remember, but let me go back and we can look and see if I go to a about and go back to where it so said library project. Partner programs in the library project. Okay. Um, there's library partners screenshots in library. Librarian. Oh. Now. I don't. Mm. Yeah, it doesn't say anything from this particular, from the library partner site mm -hmm. on how a library could partner, but if mm -hmm. you went through the information on the, the publisher site on how to partner, you might, you know, you would find to, somebody to contact. Yeah. Okay. Get in touch with people who are working on this and they can direct you in the right place. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. So if there are any other questions, please let us know. And I am going to go back here. Um, and speaking of, for example, you know, unique items or items that you might not generally think about being in a library, I'm going to do a search. Actually, I'm going to go to advanced search. Sorry. <laughs> I will go over here and say advanced search. And this time I'm going to... I'm going to do an advanced search with truncations and some other various things here. I am actually looking for items that relate to Cook and Son tours. The uh, they were basically one of the very first, you might say, travel agencies. Yeah. Okay, and sometimes. They say Thomas, and sometimes they say they have Thomas abbreviated. So mm -hmm. I'm saying I want either Thomas or the abbreviation, and I want Cook or Cooks, and I want Sun, just to try to limit it to materials that are related to them. And I will do a search. So now, it, these I find really interesting. Okay, mm -hmm. you've got. Cook's Handbook to Normandy and Brittany. You've got Cook's Indian Tours. You've got Excursions in New South Wales. They act literally were all over. They oh, help people Egypt. travel all yeah. over the world. And they were actually the called the representatives of the railway companies, the shipping companies, um, they started the, fir the first real tours in uh, Egypt. Back here, sorry. 
I'm having mousing problems, but we'll yeah. get there. I'm thinking I might need a new battery. It's getting choppy. I've noticed that too. I'm going to limit it here just a little bit. We'll go back to the 19th century when they were um, putting things out. So you could actually go into any of these books and find the hotels that they recommended, the sites they recommended. You could find the times um, on ships when they sailed for that particular year. You could find the cost for first class, second class uh, passage. You could find um, what the limits were on the amount of luggage that you could take with you. You know, just like today. Just like today. <laughs> um, it, you could find. Oh, just all kinds of information. So let's go to the health resorts of South France here for just a second. Okay. Uh, and sometimes, and I'm not quite sure, this is something I'm tr still trying to figure out too. Sometimes when they put you in and you've put in a phrase, they put you not right at, at the, the first bottom. one, but all yeah. the way at the bottom. So we're just going to sort of scroll back up to the top. But you'll notice while we're here, in the index, they've um, linked you to the pages. Nice. So in the index, you know, you could use the index to hop to the page that you want, maybe. Am I not hitting the right one? Looks like that one that you're on doesn't have you try. Huh. Okay. And it could be my mouse here, too. So we'll just skip back up here and sort of maybe generally land anything in the that middle. looks like a link is should be a link. Should be a link. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but okay. So the journey between Paris and Marseille, you have it's shortened. So by express train it's only fifteen and a half hours. Uh oh. Little attraction to the love of the picturesque. <laughs> Not a pretty view, but it'll yeah. get there. But it tells you how many miles, it tells you uh from uh, Paris to Lyons, what the population is. My goodness, their population is about what the population mm -hmm. is of Lincoln today. Yeah. Um, it tells you what hotels are available, what sightseeing, um, what sites you might want to see. Um, so just all kinds of curious things. So, you know, how many libraries, I guess today we still have tour guides. You know, oh yeah, to, to different and places. Whatnot. So Cooks does do this. They're out of business now. They they or were they've been bought by they've been bought yeah. multiple times and um, are part of uh, different entities now. Yeah. But in when I was doing searches in one of the other uh, Cooks guides that I pulled up, it was talking about how to send them. Uh, telegrams asking them to book hotel rooms and other places uh -huh. and they actually had a code book because uh -huh. for telegrams you paid by the word mm -hmm. they would use one oh, word maybe. for please reserve me a room at so you would use that one word and then yeah. put in the hotel name <laughs> you know so Slick. that made me curious <laughs> enough to do um, another search on just telegraphic codes. And I found that there are a number <laughs> of codes, code books that were used. And of used. course for secrecy and sending uh -huh, things like that, but of course and just for to saving. save money. <laughs> yes, yeah. And some yeah. of them were based on words, and we'll just pull up Liebers here. And again, well, nope, this time we did wind up at the middle sort of let's see if we'll work here now we'll go for bonds legal yeah okay sometimes there was just a word to mean this whole long sentence and sometimes mm -hmm. they also for secrecy used numbers mm -hmm. and sometimes they would say depending on the day you take this number you would add a certain number and then you would go find the word that matched that number. Mm. So, you know, just the things that you find out. Mm -hmm. So just think what an author could do writing a book oh, and get some you know, all these realistic, you know, mm -hmm. things that they could put in, you know. Yeah. 
a mystery writer or whatever. Anyway, or if somebody who fiction. read one of those books uh -huh. and wants to know, is this real, what this author made up in this uh -huh. in their novel, or is it actually something that was out there that got right? Yeah, they got right. it in real life. Yeah. So something just a little bit different. Okay. Okay. To show you a bit uh, of a few other things that you can find in here, I am going to say we have a someone who is interested in researching Fort Kearney, which is a place here in Nebraska. You can find maps and other things about Fort Kearney, but or you can find multiple materials about Fort Kearney. But what I also wanted to point out is if you click on maps, it will actually give you the locate a map location of Fort Kearney State Park, which is located where Fort Kearney was. Mm -hmm. Maps don't show up for everything, mm -hmm. but they do show up for for some things, like like this particular place. Okay, so that's nice. one thing that you can use this for. Um, if you've got someone who is doing uh, genealogy research, um, they can. I can spell correctly. <laughs> it's my own family name here. <laughs> and I know Icy Frost sounds a little strange. Uh -huh. my, there must have been some family members in my family who were sort of a little strange, <laughs> but there's more than one of them. More than one Icy Frost in our family. So, anyway, so you can find. Um, you can find books that have gene that are genealogy books that are already existing, and in this case, it says there's a snippet. So we click on it, and we find that all mm -hmm. all that's available is just this one little line, mm -hmm. which isn't very much. But if you think, well, that might really be related. Oh, oh sorry, there's two mm -hmm. little snippets from this because there's two pages, a couple pages, three pages. Sorry. Anyway, but what you could do if um, you wanted thought that this was really related to an ancestor that you wanted to read more about, you could see if you can either purchase it or you can find it in a library print. Um, so it gives you because a, there is no ebook available. A, 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 the idea that this might have you know you might want to read more. Right. Based on just the right. last snippet. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. And then also there might be. Um, Full book, full length books, and you know the the historical books for counties are wonderful for information. Again, because we're limited to the academic libraries that Google is working with, you won't find the county histories for every single county in every single state. But it just so happened that Marshall County in Kansas is here, and you'll find that. It has all kinds of information. Um, I see actually married Daniel G. Purdue, and she rates the last paragraph. <laughs> but there's a lot of par a lot of information about Daniel. It has his parents' names, his grandparents' name, uh, his siblings' names, and then in the last paragraph, it says he has was married to the esteemable, or he had a very <laughs> esteemable wife, uh, Miss Icy Frost and where she came from when they were married and it lists all of their children's names at that point in time mm -hmm. so there's a lot a lot of good genealogy information there so then you could take those names and go searching mm -hmm. to find if you know there are other Start things tracing mm -hmm. yeah right um you can uh, uh sometimes that person's name might also show up in um uh well, for example, I found uh, University of Nebraska catalogs from the 1800s mm -hmm. where it showed the courses oh, that were okay. required of the mm -hmm. students at that time, and it gave some descriptions. And it also listed the professors with their home addresses. Wow. So if, you, you know, one of your ancestors mm -hmm. was a professor at the university, hey, that would be, mm -hmm. you know, you could see what classes they taught and where they lived at that point in time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so there's a variety of things that you can use for genealogy research in here too. Okay, 
And I should show you, we are getting sort of close. Mm -hmm. nah, a little yeah, bit of time minutes. here. Yeah. Okay, to show you another feature of this, I'm going to do a search for a company that used to exist. Sorry, one minute here. Sonder Egger. Eh, I did put in one too many. Sonder Egger. Nurseries and Seed House. Okay, this was a business that existed in uh, Beatrice, Nebraska in the late 1800s, early 1900s. So you'll notice um, we do get some results, but they basically say there's hardly anything uh, that is just about them that's in full text. Okay, mm -hmm. so see you you'll find them in something like the Florists Review, where they're mm -hmm. listed as a company, and in the history of Gage County, there's a brief piece of information, but there's nothing you know specifically about uh, just them that is in full text. So I'm going to click on the All button, and hey presto, I find that in the Internet Archive and in wow. the Biodiversity Heritage Library, they wow. have the actual seed, their catalogs, their annual wow. catalogs. So we'll go to the Biodiversity Heritage Library first, and the very first item is the 1912 Garden Book, Seeds, Plants, and Trees. Mm -hmm. And there's a button here that will allow me to view the book. And oh, those beautiful covers yeah. <laughs> from those old seed catalogs. So this and, is going outside of Google Books. Right, right, right. So you can find other materials. Sometimes mm -hmm. they'll point you to what just websites or other mm -hmm. information. But in this case, hey, we found another site that has actual materials that have been digitized. Now, for this particular site, um, you can scroll through each of the pages and look at the different information. Which is it's it's nice it it and it works and you can you can go to um, full screen and you can uh, enlarge it etc. Et One thing I wanted to note before I move off of here this is from 1912 and you'll notice it says German Nurseries and Seed House it's put out by Carl Sondrager, mm. which it says on here somewhere yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah right yeah. underneath there um, but the name is the German Nurseries. Okay, and he does offer within the book to uh, send a German version if you prefer that to the English. Wow. Okay. Yeah. There were a lot of Germans yes. um, in the Midwest oh, yeah. who still spoke German at that time. I'm going to back up and go to. I'm going to back up here twice. Maybe. <laughs> there we go. And I am going to go to. Um, the very first one up here that's at the Internet Archive. Okay, <clears throat> this one's also in the Biodiversity um, uh, Library. Library. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I wanted to show you that the Internet Archive has a slightly different interface. Mm -hmm. um, and you'll notice here by 1919 they've changed their the name, name to yeah. Sondrager. Yeah, they got rid of the German because <laughs> <laughs> um, this is World War One. You'll notice here you do have a much, it, to me, I'm sorry, it, it's, a, it's a better display. You get to see, whoops, click in the right place here, Deborah. You can click on, this, on the page to move it forward, or you can click the arrows, which I'm trying to do. Uh, and then you get a double page spread. And again, you can enlarge it. You can uh, do various things. Uh, just note up here, he does make a point of saying that uh, he moved here from Switzerland. Ah, not German. A German canton, <laughs> but he moved here from Switzerland. He's not German. Um, and I also wanted to just point out, as a resource, again, this is a wonderful thing. And all, all seed catalogs from this time are wonderful things because you see how much they charge for the items. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, and I'm going to enlarge this a little bit so that I can see it. Maybe. Okay, so you can get, can you read that one, Krista? I'm having um, a little bit of a problem. The two to three foot whips, one year old, 
18 cents? Yeah, the 18 they were cents 8 cents. For one. Uh-huh. And then a dollar ten or something pay. for ten. Yeah. Yeah, 18 cents. Dollar, oh, dollar 70 for ten. And then you could Apple get trees. 100 for, what's that? 16. 16 dollars. Can you imagine today what the price <laughs> um, But beyond the price, just look at all these different... Air, what I would now call heirloom That's varieties, now, yeah. mm -hmm. and there are descriptions of what how, what kind of apples these are. You know, describing the flesh and the uh, the skin, and sometimes the climate mm -hmm. it grows in. Mm -hmm. Just think, you know, somebody researching old recipes. Oh yeah. Or you know, somebody today. Um, looking for information on the heritage, different heritage varieties. There's just all kinds of things that this could be used for. Or go back to that author again and, hey, <laughs> the, the, in that historical romance, they could be eating the right kind of apple. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, and I just will go back one more time here, and I'll show you one last feature. And I'm going to go to more, and I'll go to images this time. And there are the covers of all those catalogs, Pretty. plus others, uh, because it it looked for it put the Sondrager first. It's in relevancy order, so it put the Sondrager first, and then it does give you images of other seed catalogs too. Okay. So, any last mm -hmm. questions? While we're waiting to see if anybody does have questions, mm -hmm. I will throw out one more um, thing here. I'm going to go back to the About pages, and I am going to go to the Partner Program. And I'm not quite sure why they put it under the Partner Program, but perhaps, oh, no, sorry. Maybe it's here, maybe it's not. Mm. Yes, it is. Okay, success stories. There's a couple different ways you can get to this. Mm. Um, I think they might have put this here just to maybe use it as a selling point for to get publishers and yeah. authors to put their information up here. But there are six videos of different real-life people who use the resources in Google Books to help them in their research, in their personal life, um, you know, in their in their work, um, and how it benefited them. So that's a nuts, you know, something that you might want to look at, which would give you more ideas of how maybe you or your patrons could use Google Books. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll open this up here. Yeah, so that, that's, I think those videos are pretty, yeah, interesting, yeah. Um, teaching about a topic, can you print out? Ah. Okay, so we do have another question that came in while Deborah was talking. The second okay, one. printing. Hmm. So I want to know if you find a section um, about a topic, can you, how, like basically how can or can you print anything from out of these items that you find? Some in of books? the items you can actually get, uh, you can download PDF, and then you could certainly download, uh, print from the PDF. Um Actually, I'm not. Did it vary look. depending on where the books came from? Yeah. Or did Google say? Or whether it's in public domain or not. Right. Or, yeah. Oops. Shoot. See, there's that mouse again. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try to go back here. Okay. What I want are books. And let me see. Okay. We'll go into this one where we can actually get information. You can't actually um, highlight anything to print it, um, but in this case you can get the ebook or, let me see if I can see here, you can download the PDF. And then you can do whatever you want. And then that, you can do yeah. whatever you want. And it also offers plain text. And you know, I didn't try the plain text option. So I'm, well, let's just click on it and see what happens. It just changes Gives, the view. Okay, so it changes the view, and, and you, you could can highlight, highlight it. Yeah. So you could highlight and paste it into something else and then copy it, 
but I well it, um, it won't let you print it just from from that you'd have to like view. take multiple steps of your own right so, so you can work around it to do that yeah right <laughs> they don't have like a print button like a database no. or something or like other things would necessarily yeah no so any other questions comments you have anything type it into your question section where I guess you're wrapping up here where you got yes. everything you want to show yes. all right so I think I, I hope I covered the basics for everyone I, I just thought it would be helpful to bring this to people's attention to let mm -hmm. them know that okay law, if you were concerned about lawsuits or things like that that's all settled and and this could be a really good resource to send some of your patrons to depending on what they were looking for depending on I know some people did have different um, opinions on it in, yes. in the library world, even there was conflicting opinions. Is it good? Is it bad? Is it should we allow them? Should we be fighting them um, on this? Is it legal or not? Uh, mm -hmm. But now it's been said, you know, the courts, as you said at the beginning, have said it is. So it's there, and it, well, it was there anyways, even when it was <laughs> beyond our debate. Um, I see that's a good resource, and I, I think. Lots of uh, authors and publishers do get concerned in libraries too. Like, well, what if they don't come to us anymore? You know, what if you know this takes it away? Well, all those links on the left there to how to get it from buying from Amazon, so publishers and authors get their money, going to your library, so you still need to use your library. Mm -hmm. I can't see me personally um, thinking that this would take away you know all of their resources, you know, the reasons why mm -hmm. people would go there instead. It's just another one. Um, looks like we do have. Uh, oh, nice comment. Okay. <laughs> Someone says, so glad you offered this quick overview of Google Books without having to listen to a sales talk. Yes, we're not in this for that. <laughs> no, no sales. <laughs> no, we would, no, no money was exchanged to do this. This no. is, no, Deborah's idea completely <laughs> on her own, as far as I know. <laughs> uh -huh. so. All right, it doesn't look well, like anybody you. has any urgent questions coming in, um, wanting to... Ask, but if you do, um, you know, go ahead, explore it, play around with it. You've seen all the different things you can click on there and do, or you know, contact Deborah. Um, you guys know where to find her here. Just look for the Library Commission's website, which I'm going to show you in a second here, um, and uh, you'll be able to reach out to her email um, if you want to to uh, see if she has any other insider tips about um, using Google Books. So. Um, We'll say that we'll wrap it up for today's show. Um, the show has been recorded or is being recorded. And we'll be on our website. And I'm going to show you here how to get to our website, Encompass Live. What's nice about our show is apparently so far, except for that ad first there, nobody has called anything Encompass Live. So you can Google us and we come up first. <laughs> so that's convenient. Um, so look for us online at Encompass Live on the Commission's website. Um, when the reco recording is being um, done right now, when it's done, it'll be right here underneath our upcoming shows. We have a link to our archive sessions. Where we post them. As I said, the recording itself goes to YouTube. Um, Deborah didn't have any pre any PowerPoint or slides or handouts, so there won't be anything like that. But there will be, I will put links into the Google Books site. Here, um, here's last week's one where we had a recording and we had a presentation, but then the links in our delicious account. So we'll do the same thing here. It'll be here most likely later today. I will let you all know with an email when it's ready. It's got to process through our system, um, or go to webinar system here, and then YouTube's got to get it going, and then it'll be up on there. Um, so look for that later today. Um, other than that, um, this is our upcoming shows. I hope you join us next week. Our topic is Passport to Vermont Libraries. Um, Jessen West, who's from, um, some of you may know of her, recognize the name. She's big in the library world. Uh, lots of work she does with um, technology, but in remote small libraries. Vermont has got a lot of those, just like Nebraska mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and many other states. Um, she was actually here a few years ago um, working, well, she didn't come here, but worked with us in a technology planning um, event that we had. Um, she spoke at that. And um, that this is the second year, actually, that Vermont has done this Passport to Vermont Libraries, where you get a little passport book. Similar to we have that passport thing they just started up again here in Nebraska for traveling to the different places around the Tourism. state. Tourism. Mm -hmm. Their um, Vermont, I think it's the State Library Association, did a thing that's specifically um, related, same, same idea, but to visit all the libraries in the state. 
and it was so popular last year they're doing it again this year um, and Jessamyn's involved in that so she's going to be on the show with us remotely she's not coming here to Nebraska <laughs> um, uh, to talk about that so I definitely do sign up for that and also just added to our schedule um, yesterday because we just confirmed it um, our 2016 one book one Nebraska book is the meaning of names um, and we just have confirmed that the author of the book um, there is Karen Gettert Shoemaker will be with us the week after that to talk about her book and about and then we'll also be talking about the program itself the one book one Nebraska program and the um, celebration of Nebraska books is coming up in October this year so um, if you're interested in that title or just participating in the one book one Nebraska program at your library or as a reader whichever um, definitely um, sign up for that as I said it just got added to the schedule yesterday because we finally got things uh, finalized for that um, and new things will be coming up as usual um, on here. Also, if you are a big Facebook user and Compass Live is on Facebook, you can click over here and it will link you over to our Facebook page. Um, I don't want to get that out of the way. Um, nah. Yes, this mouse is not doing well. All right. Uh, oh, you're in that. Uh, um, Login and. Um, There's no thing to get rid of that pop up here. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I post here an information about when our show is starting up in the week, when the recordings are available, reminders of the next week's show. So if you are big on Facebook, there it is, not now. If you are big on Facebook and not annoyed by that pop up, that has not done that before, um, like us over there. I'm going to go back here and get rid of that. All right, so that will wrap it up for today's show. Thank you very much for attending, and we will see you next week on Encompass Live. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wait.